How can Conan the Barbarian hope to survive when the greatest enemy he is confronted with is himself? If that sounds confusing, don't worry, we're going to cover it all in our review of Conan the Barbarian number 8 by Titan Comics. See you in 3. And welcome back to Comical Opinions. This is our review of Conan the Barbar Barbarian number 8 by Titan Comics. And in this issue, Conan is roaming the streets of Shadazar while he's possessed by the spectral minions of Thulsa Doom. And in this issue, he tears through the town looking for a special sword that he received from an acquaintance long ago. But before we get started, please like, share, comment, subscribe, and hit that bell for notification. Your attention is greatly appreciated. Make sure to stay tuned to the end for the final rating and score. Now let's get into the credits for Conan the Barbarian number eight. It's written by Jim Zub, art by Doug Braithwaite, colors by Diego Rodriguez, letters by Richard Starkings, and the main cover, cover A, is by Ashley Izianiki. Hopefully I'm saying that right. New artist to us, so hopefully uh, that's okay, Ashley. Apologies if we get that wrong. So let's recap what happened in the last issue before we dig into this issue. In the last issue, Conan... Uh, found out that uh, the black stone that he recovered from the Temple of Bell, the stone called uh, Tarim's Touch, is actually a, a chunk or a shard of the black stone he defeated in the first arc way back in issue three or four, somewhere in there. And that the, the forces of the dark energy in within that stone possess and enthrall anyone who comes in contact with it. He just thought he destroyed the stone and released all the demons, but they, when they found out or it, it acknowledged that he was the one who destroyed the larger stone from the first arc, the spectral demons disappeared, and he thought that was the end of it. Well, he returned the stone to the person who hired them to steal it, they meaning the uh, Glory Hounds, which is that crew or band of thieves of which Conan is now a part of. They returned the stone to the person who hired them to steal it from the Temple of Bell. And he thinks all is fine. He takes his money. And he goes to sort of drink himself into a stupor to forget his past painful memories. He hooks up with uh, Chandra, who is the woman of the crew. and But she suddenly becomes possessed, Evil Dead style, and tries to kill him. Although he doesn't want to, he's forced to kill her. He goes off to find out the rest of the glory hounds have also been possessed and are killing each other. And he manages to stave them off and, and put them down, although he doesn't want to. And then the spectral... Uh, demons or minions from the uh, stone come out and now possess him. And we, and we learn in that last bit of action that the spectral demons that were released from the Black Stone are the uh, magical minions of Thulsa Doom. Longtime Conan fans will recognize that name. He's a sorcerer of sorts that goes way back. So where will we pick up in this issue? Conan is lumbering through the town, possessed, but fighting internally to keep the spirits from completely possessing him. And what he finds as they search through his memories is that they want the sword, the pick sword that he had in the first arc that way he used to destroy the larger chunk of the Black Stone uh, because imbuing it with more magical power will give Thulsa Doom an opportunity to escape his unearthly prison. So he goes through the town and they find out through his memories that Conan pawned the sword way back several months back or several seasons back actually and now he has to basically rip and tear his way through all the town's folks that had a hand in touching that stone first the pawnbroker then the blacksmith then a uh, basically a thief and a small boy and then eventually he takes him all the way up to this museum of antiquities who recognize the pick sword at least as an item of great historic value he walks in lumbering eyes aglow possessed by these spectral minions and he demands that they give him the sword give him the sword but in his mind he sees visions of Belit and all the love and the pain that he felt after she died and recognizing that now that they have the sword and it's in his possession that if the spectral demons get to imbue it with the power that Thulsa Doom needs to escape that the world is just going to be a much worse place so in a final act of sheer force of will Conan impales himself with the sword and that's that's where we leave it I'm sorry if I'm spoiling a lot but you know it's that's too important a point to just gloss over other than he walks through the town killing innocent people but it's an important point and we kind of have to cover it so that's where we are with this issue uh, interesting fact about this particular piece of, um, of um, Conan lore 
is it still fits directly in with the original writings from Robert E. Howard. Uh, the story plays off a lot of the um, past relationship that Conan had with Belit, even though it's referenced and you see his relationship with her in flashbacks. And she does make an appearance in the present day as, as a figment of his imagination or in his mind. Uh, it, it's not really part of the same story, but it's connected to the same story. So a lot of the referential points are there, but this feels very much in the same vein as what Robert E. Howard would write. Uh, and if you're interested in the background of their relationship between Conan and Belit, I recommend you go back and read those stories from the original writer. That would help uh, expand and give more texture and flavor to the pain that Conan feels subsequent to Belit's death. So what do we think about Conan the Barbarian number eight? Jim Zub is killing it. He understands the character. He, he shows a respect, a, a reverence, and an appreciation for that for that atmosphere and that vibe of storytelling. He gets the personalities right. He gets the the atmosphere right, and, and he gets the the kind of the, the grim, gritty kind of uh, anger that 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 permeates everything that uh, that you expect in a Conan comic. So the script is on point. Pacing's good. The the outcome is a, an interesting cliff cliffhanger, and you really get a sort of sense of questioning whether or not this is going to be, you know, Conan's not going to die. Of course Conan's not going to die. But at least you recognize that this last act, this last act of defiance against these spectral minions uh, could lead to some kind of new direction for the character going forward. So it's intrigue, drama, violence. There is definitely some gore in this issue and action and heavy, heavy, heavy uh, drama through trauma that uh, Conan experiences from, from problems in the past or bad experiences in the past. What didn't we like about this issue? Honestly, nothing. This, this was a solid Conan story from front, front to back. If you like Conan, this fits right in. You're gonna love this. The story's on point. The uh, development is on point. Pacing's on point. Dialogue's on point. It's all on point. It's an excellent Conan story. Uh, quick word about the art from Doug Braithwaite. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, that's right. Doug Braithwaite. Uh, he captures the essence of what you're looking for in a classic Conan story. Heavy hatching lines to give you shadow and texture and contour. Everything is grim, meaty, powerful, grounded. Everything feels rocky and solid and steely. And it just has that textured, weathered look that fits so well within a Conan story. So Doug Braithwaite is doing, likewise doing an excellent job. So final thoughts. When we think about Conan, the Barbarian number eight, solid action, violence, drama, gritty, steely, dramatic storytelling. And, and just when it comes to a Conan story, this is exactly the kind of stuff we're looking for. So if you're a Conan fan, you're in great shape. For everybody else, you're still in great shape. This is a great comic. Therefore, we're going to give Conan the Barbarian number eight, a solid 9.5 out of 10. So speaking of great comics, stay tuned for the next review where we talk about possibly your next favorite comic in uh, coming up this week. So thank you for watching and you have a great day.